it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I am so excited to be filming. It's been a long time it seems like. I am trying out the Lisa Eldridge Foundation, the full size bottle before I showed you a video with just the sample card. Now I have the full size. I have the shade number two and this is called the Seamless Skinned Foundation. Look at the shape, you guys. Have you guys seen a foundation bottle like this before? I don't think so. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, the packaging, heavy, sturdy, luxury. You can set it in the cap of the box that it comes in. It's very cool. I also picked up the foundation brush. This guy right here. This is not a brush that I have been a fan of in the past. Not this one in particular. This is not a brush type that I have been a huge fan of in the past to apply foundation, one of these flat synthetic brushes. But you know what? I was like, let's try it out. This is the way Lisa does it in her demonstration videos. Um, so we're gonna try out that technique, but I have some other techniques in my back pocket. If that doesn't work out for me, I have a different kind of synthetic brush. I have my sponge, my hands. So we're gonna try out the full thing today. I got shade two, but I did get the next, I did get the light set number two sample cards. Let me go ahead and put in the swatches of shades five, six, seven, and eight. <laughs> Right, so hopefully you found those helpful. Um, ideally, you're gonna wanna put them on your neck to try them out and blend them out a little bit. I know in my last video, I just kinda did streaks without blending them out, and it was kinda hard to see, well, is it a really a match? But I think shade two is pretty close. I mean, I'm pretty pale. I don't know that there is really a better shade for me from this set, so I think I probably got the closest shade that is gonna work for me from this brand. All right, so let's get into the details of what this foundation is supposed to do. Uh, this is an ounce of product made in Italy, $61. So this is high-end luxury. It's not the highest of high, but it's right in there with a lot of other luxury brand prices. So this is the Seamless Skin Foundation. Uh, Lisa says she wanted to create the perfect adjustable foundation for my clients and customers to use when they want to look and feel their absolute best. Drawing on my years of experience making and applying base products, I've created a unique skin-friendly formula that feels lightweight, melds seamlessly with the skin, delivering a soft focus and perfect skin-like finish. This adjustable coverage foundation can be applied sparingly for a partial or light coverage or built up for fuller coverage. Evens out skin tone effortlessly for a perfected look that is long wearing. Okay, so there's not like a ton of claims here, which is always a good sign to me. There's not like a huge promises. I think overall the feeling that I get is it's light. It's supposed to be skin like. I did get that feeling uh, when I tried it out, the sample, but I'm going to give you more developed thoughts being able to try more of the product. The active ingredients in here are nasturtium extract, which is, which is a plant-derived biotech, which has been shown to boost oxygen levels in the skin and ensure a healthy glow day after day, helps strengthen the skin barrier, boost hydration, smooth the skin. There's green tea extract, which uh, helps stimulate the skin's own defense system to protect from free radical damage reduce inflammation and premature aging. I think there has been studies on green, green tea, um, but you know, just kind of know that they're trying, to, you know, they're highlighting some skin loving stuff in here. Now there is Film XL, which has a registered trademark next to that name. It is a biopolymer network that forms a resistant, flexible mesh on the skin. Three minutes after application, the biopolymer polymer sets, delivering a sub subtle lifting, tightening, and smoothing effect. It also acts as a natural barrier against pollution and irritants in the atmosphere. She's, I believe this um, biopolymer is also in the highlighter 
glow product that she has. The, there's also bamboo stem extract, which is naturally rich in silica. It helps absorb excess sweat and sebum for soft and velvety finish without drying the skin. So for application, the tips on the little card here says that we prep and moisturizing your skin well before applying can be applied with fingers, a sponge, or a brush. For a light coverage, begin with half a pump. Apply to areas of the face that need evening out and blend well. Build as needed to your desired level of coverage. She has a QR code on the back that links you to a video where she gives you lots of tips on like shade matching, application, and even more details than I can get into because I didn't create it. A little bit more on the back of the box. This intelligently formulated self-setting foundation blends effortlessly to smooth and unify the skin with a natural looking soft focus finish. Uh, skin friendly formula gives customizable coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. Start with a little, build to your desired level of enhanced perfection. Okay, good, good, good. So I'm looking for a really natural coverage with this. This like velvety thing came with a brush. That's kind of nice. Really nice packaging with Lisa, very classic white and gold. This is what the brush came in and then I showed you the little bottom of the box you can set your foundation on your counter like this otherwise she says you can actually lay it on its side like so very cool packaging all right so I'm gonna put we're gonna get into jump right into application I'm gonna use a primer um, I believe I'm sure Lisa has spoken about a primer. I believe that it's coming. It's not for sale yet. So I'm going to be using the Victoria Beckham by Augustine Spader Original Primer. This is one of my favorite primers. It's been a few hours since I applied skincare. Otherwise, if I recently applied skincare, I don't know that a primer is absolutely necessary. I believe the first in my other video where I tried the sample of this foundation, I don't know that I use primer. I don't think so. Ooh, that feels so moisturizing. Okay, so opening this up, I'm going to try a pump to start with. I know she says half a pump. So I just squirted three pumps there. And then we're just going to dip in with this brush, which, I mean, it looks nice. It kind of has a gradient tone to it. You can see it's kind of gray to yellow. It feels like a, a, it doesn't like feel particularly special. It has a nice feel in the hand. It's lightweight. Um, I don't know, like the packaging. Let's read about this brush a little bit more. It says it's supposed to blend makeup without streaking or dragging for an even seamless blend. This is created by artisans in Japan using only the finest quality state-of-art synthetic hair, which has been specially created by experienced craftsmen for its softness, wave, di diameter, and taper. 100% vegan, cruelty-free. The fibers are then blended together to achieve the best performance for each type of brush. So it sounds like more brushes are coming. I have seen a lot of leaks of all different kinds of products that are not available to everyone, but I believe she's had some like pop-up events and stores where they have all kinds of things. And I believe she has eye brushes coming. The hairs of the brush are never cut, instead they're carefully positioned using a patented process that places the hairs in a mold to sculpt the perfect makeup tool. Ergonomic handles made from responsibly sourced Japanese cherry blossom wood harvested in Kumano Town. Um, each handle is multi-coated with a soft touch matte black lacquer. You're going to want to wash your brushes at least once a week in warm water using shampoo or brush soap. Gently swirl the brush angling the hairs downwards until all traces of makeup have been removed. Then rinse. You're going to tease the brushes back into shape prior to drying. I'll place a cloth or towel on the edge of a table and position the brushes with the handles over the edge so they dry evenly all the way around. Okay, so they don't get into too much detail on like actually how to use it on the box, which I was hoping for, but that is okay. We're just going to kind of 
use just like this, I imagine, how you're supposed to use it. For me, I have a really hard time with these kind of brushes in the past because I do get kind of a streaky outcome. But we're going to try it out. So I have three pumps on my palette. I'm just going to take a little bit at a time here and go in. And start at the middle of my face and work my way out. Now if you guys see me using this brush in a way that is it good? Comment below. I know for me, I have a lot of trouble around my nose area when I use any kind of foundation brush. But so far this looks, you know, really light. Light coverage with this brush. You know, but I just dipped in a little bit. Just a really light layer. Let me grab some more and take this on the forehead. So I think this brush was over around $70, which is more than the foundation. I was really hesitant to pick this up, but you know, Lisa hasn't come out with a brush before. You know, it's made in Japan, so it was pretty appealing to me, even though this really, this kind of brush hasn't really worked that well for me before. But overall, things are looking really good. I still need to build up around my nose because I don't have a lot of coverage. I still see a lot of red coming through. But the forehead looks surprisingly good. I'm just going to do a little bit more on the periphery of my face. And I'm just really doing a little bit at a time so I don't get like a big glob of foundation in one spot of my face that I can't blend out. I don't think I could get away with half a pump unless I had like near perfect skin. So I'm going back in on the nose, catching a little bit and getting a little bit of cakiness around here. So I think I'm going to use a, a sponge for that area like I normally would anyway. So I put three pumps on this palette and I just grabbed the last of it. So with this brush, at least for me, the kind of coverage that I like, and I could honestly go in even more. This isn't this is about a light to medium coverage, I would say. You can still see a lot of my skin coming through. It is a really pretty finish, to be honest. Really pretty. But I feel like I could do more. I mean, it's super natural looking. Um, I'm going to do some more pumps and use a sponge this time for my next layer. So that's one pump. These aren't large pumps. So th another three pumps of the number two shade. I believe this is the first rosy tone shade. Um, usually I I get a little bit confused between rosy and peach. I think I probably could also do a peach undertone, but I went with rosy because generally I go for cool or pink undertones. This is a little bit light for me. I would have preferred like the next one up but the next one up in the rosy tone was too dark. So this is like the closest I'm going to get to, you know, my color, I think. But it's a fairly good match. It's just a little bit light. So things go on a little bit faster with the sponge. But I also like picked up all those pumps in one go. So now I have way more coverage. So a little bit more coverage there. Um, I do need to still use a concealer kind of around this area just because I'm still having some redness and I just don't want to keep layering on too much foundation. I'm going in with my Clay to Poe concealer, my stick concealer. This is the 
regular broad, broad spectrum 25 concealer yes and I have the ivory shade and I'm just gonna do a little bit of concealing a little sponge here I don't know how to describe this foundation it is very skin like I think that is very true to the claims and it has like a little bit of a sheen now it's not like completely set yet but it's just got a little bit of something to it that I like. You know, this, I had a first impressions of the sample, but I really like how this is laying down on my skin. It looks really natural. I just got like the $100 Clay de Peau natural foundation. Not the matte one, but the natural one. And I have to say, like, that one, I think I need... A really good primer with because I wore it the other night and I looked very cakey at the end of the night I think it's even though it's not the matte version that clay de po one let me grab it this one right here I, I've tried recently in a video and um, I heard a lot of good things I wanted to pick it up I had the shade b10 this is the radiant fluid foundation natural this I think dries a little bit too matte on me and maybe if my preferences have changed, I just want something that's a little bit dewier and just kind of settles more. Or maybe I just make sure I don't powder too much with something too matte because I just got a really cakey result the other night, which I was not pleased with. Especially because this costs so much money. Like you want it to be perfect all night and really last and just kind of settle and pretty. This... I think I probably won't have that issue with the Lisa Eldridge. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a setting powder. I'm not going to go in hard with like a mattifying setting powder just because I don't want that cakey dried look where everything just kind of sticks to my skin in a really ugly unflattering way. Um, but this I think really looks natural. Now the brush, is this worth it? Um, honestly, I didn't get any streaks, which I think the last time I had a brush like this, it was the Sephora Collection brush, and it was much larger. It wasn't this nice shape. I think it was probably too large and too flexible, and it was, I think, too much like a paintbrush almost, but this one, I didn't have any streaking issues with. The only thing I would say for me personally, this area, I got a little bit cakey, but that generally happens to me even with a brush like this. This is also synthetic. Actually, it's a mixture of natural and synthetic. This is the Sonia G Jumbo Base. I have the whole um, collection of these. And... I, I like them. I think they are better than some of the other foundation brushes I've tried in the past. It's a mix of like natural and synthetic, which is pretty unique. I like it. Um, but I also have issues with this brush applying foundation on my nose. So for me, probably my nose, I'm probably always going to use a sponge. And um, the only thing I'm noticing with this foundation is I feel like y if you want full coverage, you're probably going to need some pumps, like quite a few pumps, at least for me, unless you're using your hands. Like when you use your hands, I think you can use a lot less product, but when you're using like brushes and sponges, they kind of eat up product really fast. And this is a very layerable foundation, which is great if you're a makeup artist, but if you just want like boom, full coverage real fast, it's going to take up some product. So if you want more of a light to medium finish most days, this is going to be a nice one because it looks really natural, especially if you can get your shade match just right. I mean, this is gorgeous. I'm really, really impressed uh, with the finish of this. I think it is named properly. The promises are, I think, pretty well met. Now I'll have to let you guys know in a future video like how this wears. Um, just like I let you know about how the clay to pose is going. It's 
not the nicest finish at the end of the day, especially if I do too much powder. It gets a little bit ugly, but I'm hoping that's not the case with this one. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of setting powder so you guys can see what the final close-up this looks like. So I'm going to use the Chantecaille Loose Powder and Light and just do a little bit here. pretty foundation. I, I am so excited to see all the things that she's coming out with. Lisa is just, she can do no wrong. Now I've seen a lot of things online. She's coming out with like cream or liquidy eyeshadows, eye brushes. Um, I'm just super excited for all that stuff to come out to everyone. It's kind of like a tease seeing all these photos of people that have been able to go to the, to the pop-up shops. I'm very jealous, but I'm glad that she's having, you know, some in-person things that people can try stuff on. I think that's going to be really key, especially like foundations. Um, but you can order, like with your order, you can get, get you can get like one free foundation card if you want to order in more than one. You can, it's three dollars, which honestly... It seems like a lot for a sample, but these are huge. I kind of get the flexible vibe of this. Like there's a little bit of a sheen to it. It just kind of works with your skin really well. Like the technology seems to be there. But, you know, I'm a fan of Lisa. I'm, I have to be, I mean, I'm a little bit biased. I think all of her makeup is really nice. Um, I do want to put on a little bit of her highlighter just for fun. So I have the Elevated Glow highlighter thingy, glow product, and I have the shade Cosmic Rose. This is like that doe foot giant kind of glow product. It's really subtle. It's like a Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, cream highlighter. The Hollywood Flawless Filter I think is a pretty close dupe. But this one is even more lightweight. And just, you know, works perfectly with the foundation. How pretty is that? Um, if you guys are on the fence about this foundation, I, I think the only thing I would be on the fence about is the shade, what to get. Um, especially if you don't quite know your undertone and, you know, she has these a little bit different colors. I mean, it's not unusual, but like peach and red and rosy undertones, you might be confused about that terminology. Um, so if you're in doubt, like this is an investment, $61 for a foundation is a lot. Um, I would get a couple of sample cards. If you're light, get the first two, uh, get, get light one and two and just test them out. Um, and then for the foundation brush, do I recommend it? Do you absolutely need it? If you don't have a foundation brush in your collection, I mean this, I mean for most of my face, this foundation applied really beautifully with this, but it is like $70 for one brush. Um, if you, There's a lot of amazing synthetic brushes out there I don't think you need this particular one, to be honest, but it is really nice. Um, and I do think it applied the foundation really well, but I don't want to say, like, you absolutely need it because there's so many brands out there these days that make incredible brushes. But this is made in Japan, so it is a bit elevated. It's crafted in a very nice way. This is a quality brush, but at the end of the day... It's still a lot of money for synthetic, so I, I can't really recommend it, but I haven't seen a foundation brush for me personally apply a foundation this well with a flat brush like this, so it's pretty good. So I know that's kind of a mixed message, but I hope you get where I'm coming from. Um, Alright guys, I never filmed the end of this video apparently, so I'm going to be showing some photos of the products from Lisa Eldridge and finish off my final thoughts and close out the video. So I just wanted to say as far as like do I recommend this foundation, I think it is 
very good. I think it's, you know, priced in the range of other luxury foundations. It's not extremely high, but it is expensive. Um, I think it has a really nice skin-like finish. Do I, I can't tell you at this point if it's long wearing. Um, I'll have to let you know in a future video, but I do think it is worth checking out. I think it is a very, very nice finish to it. And I think the major critique for me on this foundation is it, it, it builds up great, but I think if you want more of a full coverage, medium to full, you're going to have to use a lot of pumps of product. And if that's your normal sort of application style, then you'll probably go through this foundation um, more quickly than others. Um, so if, but if you prefer like a lighter finish, really natural, I think this is going to be a really great foundation for you. So it's just really up to you and your preferences if this foundation is going to make a lot of sense. And, you know, if you're really on the fence about committing to an expensive luxury foundation like this, definitely pick up a sample card with your order if you're going to order a lipstick or something just so you can try it out. I think that's going to be a great idea for most people. And do you need the foundation brush? Like I mentioned, um, it is synthetic, um, and it's on the pricey side for a synthetic, even though it's, you know, handmade in Japan. There's a lot of price ranges for synthetic brushes out there that I think will also work for you. Um, I just found this one to be really useful in applying this foundation, but not everywhere on my face. So those are kind of my final thoughts on the Lisa Eldridge foundation and brush. Um, if you guys have any questions, please comment below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.